Hi everyone. Welcome to our first episode of our five-part series on Mary, our mother, star of the new evangelization. This month of May is known to many of us as the month of Mary. Do you know that the practice of dedicating this month to our blessed mother only began at the end of the 13th century but gained popularity by 1700. Over these five weeks, we will be drawing our reflections from the joyful mysteries of the Rosary. The joyful mysteries are the Annunciation, the Visitation, the Nativity, the Presentation, and finally the finding of Jesus in the Temple. Why do you think we pick the joyful mystery to reflect on? You've got it. Mary is present in all the biblical accounts mentioned here. The rosary mystically transports us to Mary's side as she is busy watching over the human growth of Christ in the home of Nazareth. It is my prayer to you that as we contemplate Mary here, may we allow her to lead us to her son, Jesus. More importantly, may we allow her to inspire us to share Jesus with others. You may wish to take your Bibles and read along. The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favoured. The Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favour. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about? since I am a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son, and she whom people call barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. Let us take a moment and let the word of God touch our hearts more deeply. Let us now sing Hail Mary, Gentlewoman, as a response to what we have just received. Just to stop, to just love. 
And so, my dear children, we are in the month of May, which is the month of Mary, our mother. For the next five weeks, we will be reflecting on one joyful mystery each week, so that we can all learn more about our mother Mary and how she is so special to us in our Catholic faith and how praying the rosary is such a beautiful way to learn about Jesus through his mother. So let us begin. The first joyful mystery is the Annunciation. This is God sending the angel Gabriel to announce to Mary to invite her to be the mother of Jesus. And this event is recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 1, verse 26 to 38, that we just heard proclaim. This passage of the Gospel is one of my favorite. It not only tells us how Jesus came to be born through Mary, but this brings back happy memories of also the Christmas story, especially when I was a child like you, and even younger, when Christmas was a very exciting time for me. Christmas was such a special time where everything in our homes, in the town where we lived, and the cities around the world would all be so different. There would be Christmas trees decorated with tinsel balls and lights that flickers. There would be the Christmas nativity crib with baby <laughs> Jesus in the manger. And together with Jesus are the shepherds, the cow and the donkey. And above the manger, there would be a big, beautiful angel that carried the message, Gloria in excelsis Deo, which means glory to God in the highest. And then, we would also see the three kings bringing their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh to give to the baby Jesus when they came from a very far off country just to worship Jesus. In the stable, very importantly, we would see Mary carrying baby Jesus in her arms with great love and joy. And beside her would be Joseph looking on and protecting and making sure that everyone is safe. Christmas is also very special because of the special beautiful Christmas carols that we don't hear during the rest of the year, like Silent Night, O Holy Night, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Joy to the World, O Come Divine Messiah, and many other beautiful hymns that we sing in church and when we go for caroling. All of these carols remind us that Jesus is the Son of God, meaning that God himself has chosen to be born among us, fully as a human baby. He is called the Messiah, the God who has come into our world to save the world from our sinfulness. Does Christmas also give you such excitement? Today's Gospel story, which is the Christmas story that we just heard proclaim, helps us to reflect on the first decade of the joyful mystery of the Rosary. This Gospel story is a true story that tells us what happened. It tells us of the very beautiful way of how God invited Mary to be the mother of Jesus, who was to be born in her, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us remember that Mary was very young, around 13 years of age. But in those days, 
2,000 years ago, it was the Jewish ancient culture that a child of that age could already be engaged to be married. Mary was a very holy girl. Her heart was filled with God's love. And she really loved God deeply. Day and night, she would often be praying and pondering on how she can love God even more and how God too is loving her so much. In our church's teachings and the belief, Mary was pure and without sin, not only when she was a child, but throughout her life. This truth is further confirmed in today's Gospel of St. Luke, which tells us that when God sent the angel Gabriel to invite Mary to be the mother of Jesus the Messiah, the angel had to address Mary very respectfully and appropriately because she is very holy and deeply loved and special to God. So when the angel appeared to Mary, she addressed her, Rejoice, so highly favoured, the Lord is with you. This appearance and visit of the angel Gabriel came as a great surprise to Mary. In fact, Mary was afraid, as she has never seen an angel appearing to her before. But the angel assured her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favour. Then the angel Gabriel added, Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. This invitation of God puzzled Mary. And so she asked, How can I bear a son called Jesus since I'm a virgin? The angel then answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Mary pondered on this invitation of God, and then with great love and courage for God, she responded, Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. My dear children, it is very important to remember that when God invited Mary to be the mother of Jesus, Mary was not yet married to Joseph. They were only engaged to be married. In the Jewish law, if a woman is found to be pregnant with a child before her marriage through someone who was not her husband, then she would be shamed and condemned in public. And the public would stone her to death. And so, before Mary said yes to God's invitation, she was fully aware that she could be stoned to death in public if they did not know and could not believe that it is through the Holy Spirit that she conceived her child Jesus. So how can Mary be sure that the public would believe in the truth? Actually, there was no way in which Mary could be sure that the public would come to know the truth except to trust that God would protect her from harm. And so, as Mary's love for God was so deep, she dared to trust God fully and totally. As such, Mary surrendered the whole future of her life in God's protection and care. This is because for Mary, to obey and accept God's invitation is far more important than her own fears for her life. In other words, for Mary, whatever God wants her to do for Him must come first and must be more important than our own needs and comforts and even safety. So Mary responded to the angel Gabriel, Yes, let what you have said be done to me. My dear children, the way Mary loves God so selflessly and so totally moves us to be inspired by her example. God too wants you and I to love Him as deeply and as totally 
as Mary, our mother, has shown us. In Mary's courageous trust in God, Mary is clearly the most perfect model of how we too can learn to love God. Like Mary, our mother, we too must ask her to pray for us, so that with the graces from God and with Mary's prayers for us, we too can learn to love God more deeply, more selflessly and more wholeheartedly. The question you and I have is this, how can we live and love in the way that Mary, our mother, has shown us? My dear children, if we reflect on our lives, there are many things that we know in our hearts that God wants us to do and how He wants us to live in a certain way. However, we somehow do not always obey God as obediently as Mary. And we do not always choose to love God as fully as God wants us to love Him. There are times when we prefer to be selfish and naughty instead of loving God more fully. Take for example, we know that mommy is very busy with so many things she has to do. Many mummies have, have to cook and clean the house and drive you to school and fetch you after school. Some mummies even have to then wash and iron your clothing and even sit with you to help you with your homework even though she's so tired. But when mummy asks you to help keep your room clean and tidy and to take care of your younger brother and sister or to help them with their homework or to stop watching your video and wash up and pray and go to bed because you have to wake up early for school, do you always obey mummy and also daddy when he comes back from work? My dear children, nobody can be as perfect as Mary, our mother. But you and I must keep trying to be good. You and I must continue to pray to Mary, our mother, for us to love God more and become more obedient to what God wants us to do for Him and how God wants us to love our family and others, including the poor and the needy, and to pray for them too. And when we are able to love God and one another more, what happens? Mommy and Daddy will be happy. Your brothers and sisters too would be happy. You too would be happy. And Jesus and Mama Mary too would be very happy. And so everyone would be happy. Do you want this in your home? But when you are naughty and do not want to obey and listen to mommy or daddy, then everyone would not be happy. You too would not be happy. And Jesus and Mama Mary too would not be happy, right? One way to remind us to love God and one another more fully is to pray the rosary together as a family. Also, we need to pray for the church, the world, and many people who are suffering. And also do not forget to pray for the many people who have forgotten to love God and one another and are very sad in this world. For this, we will be praying the prayer of Mary, our mother, the star of the new evangelization at the end of this session, so that Mary, our mother, will continue to lead us to know and love her son Jesus more fully. Let us pause for a moment to reflect on this question. How can I live and love more like Mother Mary? Let us now listen to some of our brothers and sisters share their faith with us. So I pray the rosary on my way to work. 
and it takes me about 30 minutes and I feel like that's a more meaningful way of spending my 30 minutes instead of using my phone and being on social media. <laughs> yeah. Mother Mary to me, she is just like my own mother. When I face any difficulties that I don't feel really comfortable sharing with my own mom or my parents, she's the next parent that I run to. So I see her as a, a mother of a friend who tells me about more about his life that I will never have known if I've just gone to Jesus alone. Other than a mother, she is a young woman. When Angel Gabriel told her that she is conceiving Jesus, at her teen years, she already devote and so faithfully and so obediently say yes to God is something I think we young people can take away from her. And also her, her sense of urgency for mission, the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth. So I sense her, her desire, her urgency to bring the good news to others, even if she's in a state of discomfort, even, she, even when she's pregnant, she went all out and she does not hesitate. And I want to learn that from her. The very first instant where I devote myself to Mother Mary was when I just went for confession. And the priest just tell me, why don't you join Mother Mary's fan club? And like during confession, I'm like, huh? What is Mother Mary's fan club? He was like, oh, it's very simple. It means Jesus is number one fan club. I was like, that is a very interesting way to put it. But okay, sure, I'll try. That sparked my curiosity in joining Mother Mary's fan club. So after I joined, I told myself to firstly learn how to really pray the rosary properly. I have a very short attention span to things. But, you know, praying the rosary is like a 30 minutes thing. And the fact that I could not pray it well makes me want to like give it up. But I wanted to keep trying to stay close to Mother Mary that it helped me kick off this habit of um, my short attention span. So now I'm able to persevere through things better. Uh, I think the rosary to me has been that faithful meeting place with Mary. Whether I'm feeling good or feeling low, she is always there with me, reminding me of God's amazing love, His abundant love for me. I know that yeah, I'm never, never alone and I'm always watched by her. There was a point in my life where my grand-aunt passed away and um, for a moment, I thought I was fine because, you know, we, we preach the Nassim Creed and we say we believe in life after death. But just out of a sudden, I just didn't believe in any of this. At that point of time, I felt like no one can understand me because I'm like, six years, I've, I've been so fervent in my faith. And just because of a death of a relative that I suddenly lose faith, that's where God really sent people to remind me of the love that he has for me. And also, um, people reminded me to pray the rosary. So, when I prayed the rosary, especially um, the sorrowful mystery, because Mother Mary saw her own son die in front of her. So she knew how it felt when someone you love passed away and suffer, and is abiding in her sorrow that I felt like I am close to Jesus again. And from there, I felt like my faith has never gotten any stronger than, than it was six years ago. And I am way more convicted in my own faith and wanting um, the salvation for the, for the people around me as much as she does and as much as Jesus does for us. I went to Lourdes uh, as part of a pilgrimage to France with uh, a group of young adults. I think it was also at the point where I was thinking about what the Lord has in store for me in the future, about my vocation, uh, discernment. However, it was in the town in Ars where I had a deep encounter. Uh, it was in the chapel of St. John Vianney, who is the patron saint of priests. There was the body, the incorrupt body of St. John Vianney in the chapel. 
the whole atmosphere and the whole experience moved me very deeply. I think upon reflecting, I've already been thinking and discerning. But at the moment, I felt the Lord calling me to find my holiness uh, in bringing other people to holiness. In affirming my love for the Eucharist, he went on further to say, how about feed on my body, which is a church? Serve my people and you will be fed as well. That whole uh, experience was the defining uh, moment or defining call that made me convinced that the Lord is calling me to the priesthood. How wonderful to hear stories of ordinary people like you and I saying yes to God. Let us pray in response to witnessing how Mary's faith and obedience have helped many to say yes to God. Mary, Virgin and Mother, you who move by the Holy Spirit, welcome the word of life in the depth of your humble faith. As you gave yourself completely to the Eternal One, help us to say our own yes to the urgent call, as pressing as ever, to proclaim the good news of Jesus. In today's activity, we are going to make a prayer card for your family prayer corner. If you do not yet have a prayer corner at home, now is the time to set up one. Here's how different some of our prayer corners can look like at home. For those of you who already have a family prayer corner, here is what you can do. You could draw a picture of Mary or make a prayer card of the entire Hill Mary. When you have finished your artwork or prayer card, I invite you to submit a photo of your work here. In this segment, we would like to suggest that you take up a challenge to do something loving that you sometimes do not like to do. For example, if you are often moody and you do not care for your younger brother or sister, then for this week, we ask you to try to ask Mother Mary to help you love your little brother or sister more. Or you can think of other ways of how you can love in the way that Mama Mary would want you to love. We encourage everyone to rise to the challenge as a family, encouraging and cheering each other on. We want all of you to place the work of the new evangelization of the Catholic Archdiocese of Singapore under the care and protection of Mary. Let us all join with Mary, our mother, in praying for a greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit so that with new zeal, new ways, and new inspiration, everyone of us may take up the mission to go out 
to all the world and proclaim the good news. I would now like to invite you and your family to join me to pray the prayer of consecration of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Mother, star of the new evangelization. So let us pray together. Most Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, we praise and thank God for His mighty works in you. O Blessed Mother, star of the new evangelization, we consecrate the new evangelization for Singapore to your most immaculate heart and implore your intercession for a mighty renewal of the Catholic Church in Singapore. We entrust to you all priests, religious and laity. Guide our leaders to imitate your humility and obedience to God and to be docile to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. May all hearts be converted and reignited with love for Christ and inflamed with evangelical zeal so as to bear witness to God's loving salvation. Mary, Mother of the Church, unite us with the Sacred Heart of Jesus to be a people of communion in mission. May your constant love and guidance be the light of refuge that leads us to your Son, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen. Let us close with a song entitled, As I Kneel Before You. Parts of this song contains the Hail Mary prayer in Latin. Ave Maria means Hail Mary. So try to follow if you can. But if you can't, I invite you to join us by humming along. As we sing, let us unite our yes with our Mother Mary's yes and present all our yeses to our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining in this session. I hope you have found this session to be helpful to you. Take care and God bless you.